In today's video I'm going to be talking about Tidelands by Philippa Gregory. This is my first novel by Philippa Gregory and I kind of can't believe I haven't read anything else because I know she's a well-established household name. Um, so after reading it I'll definitely be reading more, partly because this is actually the first book in a trilogy which I did not know when I bought it. I thought this was a standalone novel so I kind of got to the end and wondered why the story hadn't been resolved. This book I personally really enjoyed. It's historical fiction which which I've been enjoying a lot. I've read quite a lot of historical fiction novels sort of in the past few months. It's set off the coast of Sussex um, in a place called Selsey Island um, and the sort of marshy tidelands are a almost Dickensian style backdrop to the novel um, and I think Gregory's writing style is almost reminiscent of Charles Dickens as well which I really enjoyed, sort of um, great expectations feel to it, especially the beginning part when they're out on the marshes. Um, and the protagonist in the book is called Alina. She's a poverty-stricken young mother who's been seemingly abandoned by her husband who sort of disappeared. The novel begins on Midsummer's Eve of 1648 and Alinor goes out to the um, nearby graveyard and there's a sort of superstitious belief that on Midsummer's Eve a ghost will appear and she believes that um, she might see the ghost of her husband and if she does see it then it will confirm that he's dead and she can kind of go move on with her life as a widow. So the society that she lives in is a very gossipy, toxic environment, a lot of women kind of talking amongst themselves and, and she's the descendant of a wise woman and she herself is a midwife and a wife woman and she's herbalist. She's not a popular figure in the town despite being described as very beautiful um, so it does appear that a lot of the nattering old women are quite jealous of her. Um, she works really hard and she's a very, in my opinion, she's a very likeable protagonist and you do really feel for her. On Midsummer's Eve when she's waiting in the graveyard she does not find her husband's ghost but actually comes across a man who is a royalist so he's kind of on the run in hiding. He's a priest who's a supporter of the king and she helps to hide him in her shed and they sort of have this secret relationship. I've looked, as I always do, at some reviews that other people have written on Goodreads and Instagram and other platforms and spoken to a friend who also read this at the same time as me and she really disliked the book for reasons that I can understand because the romance that weaved through this between Alan and James is quite ridiculous and it kind of goes from zero to 100 which I really thought was quite laughable. Although I love a good romance it did seem to come out of nowhere and they went from barely knowing each other to being absolutely obsessed with each other. Considering she'd been abandoned by another man who was abusive, she was in an abusive marriage, she seemed to be very open and trusting with this stranger and suddenly accept him into her life. So I thought that was not very believable. I think she would have been a lot more guarded. But overall, I really did enjoy the novel. Um, there's obviously two more parts coming out. I think the next part is due next year. So I've got a little while to wait before I find out what happened because it really left it on a cliffhanger. I think historical fiction for me, I really enjoy it because it takes you away from your life and it's real sense of escapism. We're suddenly going to 1648 and people that live very differently than we do now but still the way they're relatable I think is what I enjoy and Philippa Gregory definitely has a gift for um, making you feel for characters well I wanted it to carry on and I didn't want it to end basically 